of the most significant subjects in this year's campaign for the general election has been immigration. That's to show you that a lot of things are going to change after the 4th of July 2024, depending on who wins the election. So all the parties have come out specifically to say what they are going to do, what we should expect regarding immigration after the election or after they win the election. Immigration has been top on the list. In fact, after they talk about tax, the economy, the next thing that follows is immigration. So I'm even talk about immigration first before talking about other things. That's to show you how serious it is. The Prime Minister recently even posted something on his Twitter page saying, oh, this is what we should expect from Labour Party if they eventually win the election, right? And a lot of comments came out from that. Even in the caption, he says illegal migrants are waiting for Labour. This brought about a lot of reactions, right? So it is really a serious topic. Now, from this article, this is a summary of everything that each party has said they're going to do concerning immigration what their plans are what we should be expecting so eventually if any of this party wins this is what we should be expecting regarding immigration right now for conservative they have said they will get rwanda scheme off the ground as soon as possible we all know about the rwanda scheme right so he's saying that if they are re-elected into office this is what they are going to do and secondly they're going to introduce a legal cap on migration this is in addition to what they have done already obviously they have done a lot of things they have made a lot of changes to immigration rules introduced a lot of new things in addition to all they have done already they're going to also introduce a legal cap on migration i think they used to do this before before covid they did not give more than twenty thousand cos every year or something like that but after covid and you know the impact covid had on the economy and everything they scrapped that as i giving more cos you know and all of that so now they want to go back to it right so if they eventually win the election on the 4th of july they're going to put a cap we don't know the number yet don't know the exact number of visas or COs they're going to be given every year but he just said they would reintroduce it a legal cap on migration and then they would also increase visa fees wow like again this is something that they have done they've already increased visa fees they've increased a lot of fees increased ihs fees visa fees so many they increase a lot of fees wow and they want to increase it again okay but guys just know that if the conservative party wins they plan to increase visa fees yet again and then they will cut migration by half and then reduce every year of next parliament so they are saying that they're going to definitely cut down migration and these are some of the measures they will put in place to make sure that happens right so these are their plans if they win the general elections on the 4th of july we should be expecting the conservative party in addition to all they have already done to do this again now for labor labor said they're going to reduce migration by training more uk workers to fill employment gaps so yeah by this they have actually acknowledged that there is an employment gap but instead of depending on migration they're going to be training those in the uk to fill up those gaps which i feel might take a lot of time because there are gaps already there are employment gaps there are shortages labor shortages everywhere in different sectors so when do you want to come into office and now start training people that are interested in taking up those jobs and then for them to take up the jobs and for the economy not to suffer before all of this happens you get what i mean so yes they have acknowledged that there are employment gaps but they are saying that instead of migration or instead of bringing overseas workers to fill up those gaps they're going to train people in the U uk to do that but this is really interesting because if you ask me it might be really difficult for them to achieve this because if you go to the nhs for instance now you will see so many migrants working there this is good but i think it might be hard and obviously it's going to be a long-term plan not something they can just achieve immediately because migrants are almost everywhere in different sectors doing those jobs contributing to the economy right if you go to the nhs for instance i don't think there's any word you will go to that you will not see migrants go to care homes nhs go to the hospitals you're definitely going to see migrants doing those jobs right and there are still shortages there that's why these people are not ready to take up 
so they still have to depend or fall back on migrants right but he is saying that no we don't want to do that anymore we want to train people so just imagine how long it's going to take to get people first of all that are interested and then to train them before they can fill up these gaps but anyway this is something they said they are going to do if eventually they get into office on the 4th of july 2024 right and the next one is that they're going to ban employers from recruiting from overseas as default so they're going to say oh all ye employers recruiting from overseas stop so obviously there's going to be penalty for any employer recruiting from overseas so all of them should depend on whatever it is they have whatever manpower it is they can find within the uk if you can't find it then forget it but if it means bringing people from overseas it is not possible so he's saying he's going to ban all employers from doing that it's going to stop it totally and if you try to disobey or if you try to do otherwise then there will be consequences so this is what he's saying so that's to show you that if labor wins the election come 4th of july 2024 overseas employment might become a thing of the past so they're going to abolish the non-dom status immediately curbing transitional measures and they're going to bring in 1000 more staff dedicated to returning asylum seekers with rejected applications and they're going to cancel the rwanda scheme so you see this rwanda scheme that the conservative mentioned they're going to get it off the ground you know the labor party is saying that they're going to remove it totally they're going to cancel the rwanda policy in fact it's not even going to exist if they win the election so lib dems is saying that if we win the election come july 2024 this is what you should expect we're going to scrap the rwanda scheme so it seems like everyone is scrapping the rwanda scheme except conservatives anyway they're going to scrap the rwanda scheme and provide a safe legal route for refugees okay and they are going to create a dedicated unit to decide on asylum cases within three months right labor is saying that they're going to bring in 1000 more staff dedicated to asylum and then the lib dems are also saying that they're going to create a dedicated unit so we should be expecting more jobs right okay they're going to create a dedicated unit to decide on asylum cases within three months and then they're going to give asylum seekers a right to work if no decision is made on their case in three months well is this really a good plan i don't know but this is what they said they're going to be doing and then he's going to give full settled status to all eu citizens in the uk with pre-settled status so the next party is greens and this is what they have said they will do if they win the election they're going to replace home office with department of migration okay they're going to scrap minimum income requirements for spouses of migrants with work visas okay so the minimum income requirements that was just increased by the conservatives right they are saying that they're going to scrap it they're going to scrap that there's not going to be anything like minimum income requirements for spouses of migrants with work visas that's good and then his, they're also saying that they're going to end all detention of migrants and all asylum seekers to work while their case is being decided right so for the greens this is what we should be expecting if the win the election come the 4th of july 2024 okay now moving to reform the reform have said all migrants who arrive illegally from safe countries are barred from claiming asylum they are also saying that small boat migrants who cross channel are sent back to france and then required five years residency before benefits can be claimed okay but what's the difference between what is happening now like what's in place now and what he just said right he said you require five years residency before benefits can be claimed for the most part most people spend five years in the uk before they get ILO, and you can't claim benefits if you don't get your ILO. nobody claims benefits on a visa in fact on your visa it is boldly written no recourse to public funds right so most migrants most legal migrants are not entitled to public funds they don't claim benefits so and uh, you can begin to claim that after five years that is after you have gotten your ILO. so <laughs> what is this it's still the same thing okay maybe they don't know what's in place right now because for you to have said you require five years residency 
see i don't think you even know what's on ground because that's exactly what's on ground except for joe's whose visa has required them to stay for just three years before they get ilr but for the most part, majority of the people get this after five years, right? For those on work visas and the rest of that. Anyway, moving on, the next is for asylum seekers to be processed from safe countries offshore. And finally, 20% national insurance for international workers okay so can you guys see if the reform party wins the election this is what they have proposed so this is what we should expect from the 4th of july 2024 so this is specifically what their plans are for immigration if you read through you're going to see what their plans are for the other sectors but we're sticking with immigration okay because that's just the essence of this particular video right so yeah that is it so this should guide you on who you're going to be voting for the party you're going to be voting for come the 4th of july 2024 may the best man win right and this is what we should expect obviously if these changes are made it's going to be affecting a lot of people both those in the uk those yet to come it's basically going to be affecting lots of migrants okay so this should guide you and lead you to who to vote for come the 4th of july 2024 this is obviously not a political video about telling you who to vote for and who not to vote for that's not the excess of this video this is just to you know plainly show you guys all what their plans are all the different parties all that have said what we should be expecting come the 4th of july 2024 now will they stick to this will they stick to their campaign promises we don't know okay but from all they have said from everything they have said so far regarding their plans for immigration this is exactly what we should be expecting so yeah that's it we've come to the end of today's video thank you so much for watching this is not an immigration advice this is not to tell you who to vote for this is not a professional advice remember if you need a professional advice do well to get one okay so yeah thank you all so much for watching today's video i'll see you guys in my next one bye, -bye.